Tony Nader is a medical doctor trained at Harvard Institute of Technology, um, has a PhD in neuroscience, is globally recognized as an expert in the science of consciousness and human development. Dr. Nader, whose training includes internal medicine, psychiatry, and neurology, neurology is best-selling author, One Unbounded Ocean of Consciousness. He is the successor to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and the head of the Transcendental Meditation Organizations globally. So without um, any further, um, you know, to, to sort of keep you waiting, um, Your Excellency, um, Dr. Tony Nader, with his piece in Latin Court in Sierra London. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Amajiji, and congratulations again for continuing this wonderful work on all levels of yoga, Ayurveda. And it's a great joy to be connected again to this wonderful assembly. Uh, I'll take the, the liberty of calling our great parliamentarian Bobji, since that's how you call him. He is dear to our heart for now. I feel like I know him personally, having come back again and again on this uh, platform. There are so many wonderful aspects about Ayurveda, so many great levels that are being uh, presented and uh, acknowledged, and it's great from time to time to uh, come back to them and to uh, experience them and to um, amaze ourselves with their amazing importance. I'd like to share with you some aspect which is related to consciousness. And that is very important today in our world. S this reality of the importance of our minds, our thoughts, is being recognized in the UNESCO. And I hope you can see the slide, probably, that is there on the, on the screen. Yes, we can. So since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. This was the realization after a huge stress in the world, which was the Second World War. All the great leaders of the world came together and they felt enough is enough. And where shall we find peace? And they realized it's not in war because when war happens, at the end, everybody loses even those who say that they are winners. And the physical outer aspect of reality does not give us true permanent peace if we act on it only on that level, on that surface level of reality. Our decisions, our perceptions, our visions are made in our consciousness, in our mind. And that is where we have to look for peace. That individual level of peace we have talked about many times in terms of the ultimate value of yoga, bringing happiness and health and prosperity and well-being for the individual. But as a group, we emanate from ourselves whether we are settled and emanate peace and spread peace or we are stressed and strained and that creates stress and strain in our society. This leads to collective stress, and collective stress and tension lead to conflict and war. We have seen that a small percentage of people practicing the advanced techniques of transcending, transcendental meditation, as we see here in the slides, and again, because our previous colleague, uh, his slides didn't move on, are my slides moving on? <laughs> yes. yes, they are. Wonderful. So this is an assembly in our university in Fairfield, Iowa, Maharishi International University. They assemble there and they used to assemble in large numbers. Unfortunately, due to COVID and versus uh, different situations, the assemblies were much less in number. However, the scientists have looked at what happens when the numbers are high enough. And you can see here, on the left side of the, the slide, what we call the baseline period between 2002 and 2006, where the numbers of people practicing these mental techniques, techniques of consciousness, which we call consciousness-based techniques, 
we can see it's called TMCD group during you know the baseline and the experimental period. That's the title of the slide. And you see on the right side what we call the experimental period, a time in which we have added the number to make sure it is reaching what the critical number is to create an effect. And this was between 207 and two, 2007 and 2010. So when you look at the homicide rate as one aspect in the society, you see that there is uh, on the left side, again, this is the, the period, the control period. And on the right side, there is a very significant decrease in homicide rate. Now you can see the lines going up and down, going up and down, and then they continue to go up and down because there are seasonal effects and different effects that influence suicide rate. However, we see that there is a very clear trend. And if you count the numbers of reduction in homicide rate, we see that we have averted 8,000 fatalities during that period. And this is extremely significant, not only in terms of size of the effect, but also in statistical analysis of what happens. Now, we looked, therefore, having found this, we looked at all other factors that have, uh, you know, been uh, affecting the well-being of society. And these are, you know, the, the effects on crime, fatality rates, and different other factors, such as decreased motor vehicle fatality, decreased drug-related deaths, even decreased infant mortality rates, decreased fatality rate in other accidents and in violent crime. And as you see in these different slides, all of them has decreased. So this slide summarizes, in fact, the effect. And here you have in the blue line, you have the period baseline. And then in the middle of the slide, you have uh, the blue line showing how much the number of people that practice this technology of consciousness, which is really a technology of Ayurveda, technology of Veda, technology of yoga, whichever, because Ayurveda is to save life, and we, we can save lives and improve conditions in society on a group level, not only on an individual level. Now, what happens here is very clear. What you see all these lines going down, like in the middle part of the slide, the experimental period, they indicate different groups of situations and uh, crime or murder that have been also recorded between 2006 and then following up to 2010, 2011. They include murder, rape, assaults, robbery, infant mortality, drug deaths, vehicle fatalities, and children deaths by injuries. And as the group stopped, this is called post in the right side of the slide, the post period, because due to different situations and financial uh, things, people left the group and they stopped practicing or they reduced the practice. Gradually, the groups dwindled, as you see on the right blue side going down. And this is when we see all of these other factors, all of these factors coming back gradually to baseline. So we have looked at all these factors during the period that we have studied and have seen this clear changes in all these fatalities and problems in society. And when you compare to the different groups and how it happens, you see that during the demonstration period, there was a very significant, very important aspect of transformation that has happened that you see in the blue here between 2000 and 2007, which is very significant and extremely important. So going back to our thinking of creating health and happiness, we realize that there is something we can do as a group. And if I can only take the attention of one parliamentarian, hopefully you will see that we have a true solution to the problems that we face in the world. The solution is significant. This is only one example, 
We have done it many, many times, 56 different scientific studies. And particularly, we have uh, uh, been able to show, for example, during large assemblies, that at a distance, we can reduce conflict in society. We have done this during the war in Lebanon, and over five different times, we have seen decrease in deaths, decrease in conflict, and improvement in relations between nations. So just to finalize, uh, to finish the, the, the talk, I, I'm just summarizing that we have done these studies under different conditions. They are published in peer-reviewed articles, and I call upon all nations and all leaders of the world, all responsible leaders, to look at this carefully. If we keep doing the same things over and over again, we cannot expect different results. We have to try something new, and on the basis of the scientific rigorous research that has been peer-reviewed, it would be almost a crime not to try something that has been proven to work while we are keeping trying things that have been proven not to work, and that is war and conflict. So we have to know how to destroy the enmity in the enemy rather than trying to destroy the enemy and creating more and more enmity in the world. So this is, at this critical time, my humble sharing with all of you and hope that we can use the technology to make life better for everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Nader. Thank you so much indeed. And we wish you tons of success in your 10,000 uh, meditation program in India.